Hello friends, and for those that don't know, the free animation software OpenTunes has a sister program, also free, called Tahoma 2D, and this is it. And the latest version, version 1.3, has just been released with lots of bug fixes, some small improvements, and some new awesome features. First off, if you don't know, Tahoma 2D is a fork of OpenTunes, meaning they share the same code base and the same basic features. But Tahoma 2D has a slightly different layout, more features, and is portable, which means that you don't install it. You just download it, unzip it, and run. So you can run it on a USB stick if you want to. But today, let me show you my top five new features. And there's so many more new features in this release that I can't show you, I haven't got time today. So do check out the release notes linked down in the description. And for the supporters of my top two tiers on Patreon, you'll find a deeper dive video showing more detail about these new features. So if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon site, link down below in the description. Oh, and by the way, I'll be saving the coolest features to the end of this video, so do stay tuned for that. At number five. So starting with number five, let's start with a small improvement, but one that I've been hoping for since I first started using OpenTunes and Tahoma. Let me first show you the timeline toolbar by right clicking on the column header and choosing toggle quick toolbar. And when you create a new level using the timeline toolbar or the menu, and you get this pop-up, you can rename your level here at the top where it says name. But after creating it, you get a default name for the column. But now with Tahoma 1.3, if you change the level name to say sketch, and then click OK, then the column gets the same name as the new level. And it's a tiny change, but it will speed up your workflow and make working with columns easier. I often forget to name my columns and then get them mixed up later when adding effects or parenting them, so this will really help. Number four. Next is style sheet management. So let's draw something on here. And as we're using a smart raster level, let's look at one of the changes to the raster brushes layout. So click the raster tab at the top there. And you'll notice that instead of the brushes just being shown in one long list, their brushes are now shown grouped in their categories that you can collapse down by clicking on the header there. So now it's much easier to get to the brushes that you actually are interested in. And to avoid looking through the list of brushes that you don't use, you can also add your favorite brushes into a favorites list, which will save you a lot of time by bringing your favorite brushes to the top of the list. And you do this by simply right clicking on one of your brushes and choosing add to favorites. And the first time you add one to your favorites, the new favorites list appears here, but you can add as many as you'd like in here. Now your favorite brushes are shown at the top of the list there. And I think this will encourage me to experiment more with the brushes, knowing that I can add them to my favorites list and not have to hunt them down. Number three, timeline navigation tags. So let me show you another new feature that'll save you time. So with a long animation, you'll often find yourself jumping around from the start of one movement to the end of it, and maybe to the next movement. And finding a way to mark these places can be tricky. But now there's a new feature in Tahoma called navigation tags. And you get to them by right clicking on the frame number above the timeline. So just move to a frame, right click, and then choose toggle navigation tag. And you'll see this little marker appear. And to remove it, just do the same again. Just right click, toggle navigation tag, and it disappears. So let's add one in here. We'll add one further down the timeline and a little further. So now you can jump between them by right clicking on the timeline header and then choosing previous tag to jump to the previous tag or next tag to jump through to the next tag. Really handy for moving around a large or complex animation. And don't forget that I go into these in more detail in my deeper dive video on Patreon. Number two. Next is referenced fills. So next, I've got another top request that I think you'll like. And that's to be able to color your animations in a different column to the actual line work. 
And personally, I haven't needed this feature in the past. I prefer fills on the same level as the lines. But I know a lot of you have asked about it when you first come to OpenTunes and to Homer 2D. And now you can get it into Homer 1.3. So if I draw some shapes in a new level, let me add a smart raster level again. I'll call this level ink. I'll draw three slightly messy circles here. And then I'll add another level. And in that, I'll draw some extra lines. Let's make them rectangles. And then I'll add a final level for the fills. So again, a smart raster level. I'll name this fill. And notice how the column changes to have the same name. And I'll put the fill level behind the ink levels. And choosing the fill bucket tool, over here, you'll see a new option in the Options toolbar called Refer Visible. So I'll tick that. And choosing this means that the fill bucket will refer the fill to any levels that are visible and fill within those. So if I click to fill, let me add a colour here on the first circle. So I'm filling in on the fill level which hasn't got any lines and is taking note of the circles drawn in the ink one level. And if I fill in the second circle on the left hand side here, it fills up to the line of the rectangle that's actually drawn on the ink two level. So it's taking note of the lines across two different levels. And that's because both of those columns are visible. So now if I make one of the ink columns invisible, so I'll hide the rectangles. And now if I fill in this third circle, it fills the whole of the circle because the only lines visible are the circle lines, not the rectangle lines. And now if I reshow the ink column, you'll see the lines in front of all of the fills. And if I hide those, you'll see the fills are just the shapes and not the lines themselves. Really handy. And number one, and my number one feature in Tahoma 2D version 1.3 is the implicit frame hold feature. And this is the final feature that I want to share with you today, and it will be a game changer for some of you. And this will also make Tahoma work more like other animation software. So if I add a new drawing level here, and then draw something on here, Prior to this version of Tahoma, to have this drawing show for more frames than one, you'd have to extend out the drawing for the number of frames that you want it to show for. But in version 1.3, you don't have to do that. The drawing will show on the timeline up until the point where you have another drawing to the end of the animation or until you put in what's called a frame hold. So if I put another drawing here on frame number six, now drawing number one will show for the first five frames until we hit that drawing, then that will show until we get to the end of the animation. So let me show you how you can stop the drawing being shown sooner. You can simply go to an earlier frame, right click, and then choose stop frame hold. And you see this cross appear on the screen here. So drawing number two will be shown on frame six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we'll stop from frame 11 onwards. But if you change your mind about using this, you can simply click back into that cell and then press the delete key, which removes that stop, and then the frame will be shown up until the end of the animation. So this makes it so much easier to set up and retime your animations. No need to be constantly extending new drawings. You can just add the one and know it'll be shown until either the next drawing, the next stop frame hold marker, or the end of the animation, which is great for backgrounds that last till the end of the animation. Just create them in frame one at the beginning and they will show all the way through the whole animation. But this feature is really good for helping to time your animation as well. So if I add another new drawing here and then draw something on there. So we've got three drawings, a diagonal squiggle, one at the bottom, and then one at the right hand side. If I wanted to extend drawing one to last longer, or drawing two to last for less time, now with the implicit hold feature, I can simply 
click on drawing number two and move it to the right. So drawing one will be held for longer until it hits drawing number two on frame nine here. Likewise, if I want drawing one to last for less time, I can simply drag drawing two back to the left. And then drawing one is shown only for two frames, followed by drawing two for a lot longer until drawing three. So it really helps you to time out your animation. So that's my top five new features in the new Tahoma 2D version 1.3. Download it now and check them out. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters, with special thanks to Maria Torres and Robert Reese for your support. Don't forget that my tea mug and teapot supporters will get an extended version of this video showing a deeper dive into these features. So if you're interested in becoming a supporter and seeing videos early, getting access to downloadable projects, extended videos like this one, or behind the scenes videos, then check out the Patreon site linked below. So I hope that was useful. And if you enjoyed it, you'll also find this video useful about Tahoma. So check that out as well. And now see you next time for another video. And that's a guarantee.